Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Vosk One YouTube channel. I'm Vosk and this is Tails, the star of the show. And today we're going to be talking about or a review really of an ASIC miner that you shouldn't hate. A lot of people have a very negative perception of ASIC miners, really myself included most of the time. But in today's video, I'm going to show you a unique ASIC miner. The majority of it, seriously, is made here in the USA. And its main goal is to decentralize hash rate. And not only does this miner function as a miner, but it's also going to operate as a full node and wallet, which is really an awesome example of how ASIC miners should really be. Oh, look at it, guys. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, God. It's the future bit Apollo. It can fit on your desk. You could put it in your drawer, but that's a fire hazard, so don't do that. But seriously, look how small it is. And you can hear it, it's on right now, mining in the balanced mode, which is the best compromise between power consumption and hash rate. You can also hear the miner, and it's pretty quiet. I'm using a static fan speed to get that white noise effect. Otherwise, the fan speed will vary, and quite honestly, it's annoying. For the record, this thing can be much louder and much quieter. If you turn this thing on the turbo mode, it gets pretty freaking loud. And if you turn it on the eco mode, you can hardly hear it. Futurebit Apollo ASIC Miner. This thing is built to run off your desk or really just in your house. Unlike most ASIC miners, which are really built for industrial scale applications, you know, like really big mining farms, not your basement. Whereas this would be the polar opposite. The goal of this machine is to decentralize hash rate. And that's super cool, you know, with the whole crypto ethos of being decentralized, which is kind of the opposite of mining pools and mining farms and just huge centralization of hash rate. But anyway, my point is just that this little guy is built to combat this. This isn't a miner you're gonna get rich off of. Well, not necessarily, unless you struck it rich with uh, solo mining. Which, speaking of solo mining, someone wants to donate their hash rate from their future bit Apollo, so comment your Litecoin address on this video along with your favorite thing about this device, and then someone's gonna sync that up to your address for about 24 hours, and that'll keep going for a while. So it's always fun to just decentralize some hash rate, let people try out devices, and this way, you know, you can essentially get a 24 hour tour of what it would be like with this device, but it will be on solo mining, so you're not gonna get, you know, paid per share. Solo mining means that if your miner solves a block, which in the network hash rate of Litecoin would be very low, but the reward would be very high. It's kind of like playing lottery jackpot, stuff like that. Come on, let's make mining fun again. But without further ado, let's jump into the rest of this review. This is the miner, weighing in at $299.99, and you can get it with a pre-burned uh, SD card with the Apollo OS on it for 25 bucks. And quite honestly, unless you like stuff like that, just go ahead and get this SD card so you can plug it in and go. You'll thank me and yourself and everyone else later. Uh, if you want to buy it, you know, again, this isn't some kind of show video. I didn't make millions doing this review or anything like that. They did send me this minor two review because I reached out to them because I think it's so cool. If you do, uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, you may remember when I reviewed the Futurebit Moonlander 2, which again was a really cool miner, but I saw less utility with it. The really cool part about this device is that it can function as a miner and also a full node for Litecoin as well as a wallet. The node and wallet functionality are not fully built out yet, so right now it's just working as a miner, but that is absolutely the plan for the creator and developer of this project, and I think that could not be any freaking cooler. If you do want to go ahead and get the device, I don't make anything when you use this code. It's really just for you guys. But if you use Voss 10 off, you'll get $10 off your purchase. With this miner, you will need a power supply. It doesn't come with one. You could just attach it to a very basic ATX uh, computer power supply and just use, for example, the uh, tester, which is that little piece that comes on the EVGA uh, power supplies and then it would function without being hooked up to a motherboard and it could power this miner along with some other ones if you wanted to get a couple or you could simply just throw it on to your mining rig which is what I personally did because I had some spare PCIe connections on it and I just plugged it into my mining rig so when that mining rig is on so is that Apollo miner or you could hook it up to like the back of your gaming PC. Again, you'll just be running those PCIe connections off of it. There's a lot of options with this thing. It's pretty flexible. One gripe I did have when I was plugging this up was when I was using the uh, 
PCI splitters, which is like the common type I've always used and gotten off Amazon, they have, were having troubles fitting in um, to the connection just because it's so tight with the Future Bit Apollo case. However, using uh, the Rosewell and EVGA PCIe connections, which are the ones that come right off of the power supply and not the ones that you know are the splitters. It went in fine. It was a little tight, but they went in there and connected, and obviously the device is powered up and working. Just something to keep in mind if you're planning to use that. You don't want to break it when you're just trying to hook it up. So you already know how the Apollo Script ASIC Miner looks. You know how it sounds, and you know how much it costs. But how does it mine? So this is a screenshot of my dashboard from a couple of days ago mining a different coin. I'll explain this as we go on. But uh, right here you can see the hash rate I had at that time, how many shares I had accepted, how many shares were rejected, the difficulty I was mining it, the hardware errors of the machine, my uptime, and the temperature. Really cool, nice dashboard. And it's actually built off of Minera, or Minera which is a pretty cool open source dashboard that some people have used in a lot of different projects, but he's uh, pivoted towards kind of building some interfaces for uh, other companies. For example, he built this for FutureBit, which is pretty cool. You've got this device designed in the US with an OS from Italy and some parts from around the world. I think it's pretty cool. But in this example, I was mining Golden. I'm not recommending Golden, actually kind of the opposite, but I was just picking a coin with a smaller network hash rate um, that weekend. And I actually ended up mine hitting two blocks with it, which was really cool. But then I looked more into this mining pool, and I found out that uh, <laughs> they haven't paid out in over pretty much a year. So, sorry me. The bad news is I hit two blocks, and that was a total of 160 coins, which at the current price is almost three bucks. And for a miner that's you know $300, if it was making $1.50 a day because I hit one block on Saturday and one block on Sunday, that was actually really good. I got pretty lucky, and uh, too bad for me, it didn't work out. Recently, the hash rate has jumped back up, and I didn't find another good solo pool, or I didn't find a good solo pool uh, for this coin, so I moved on to a different one, which brings me to my next point. I am testing out mining Florin coin, which again is another old coin. I don't recommend or anything like that. I'm just testing it out, having fun with solo mining. But in this example, I haven't been as lucky. So I synced it up and I'm mining over here in bsod.pw. Again, I'm not recommending or endorsing anything. This is just, you know, some internal testing I'm doing here, but I'm showing you guys, you know, stuff I check out behind the scenes. I did hit a block. I did get paid for it. And that was a total of six flow, right? So you're probably like, wow, you're probably rich now. Well, six flow is like 30 cents. So I'm not, I'm not rich yet, guys. But if you do take this basic profit calculator and don't live and die by these things, but if you do run the numbers, if you mine this coin with this miner, you're estimated to pretty much break even in one year. And in this bear market, that's actually a good projection. And the purpose of this miner is more to decentralize hash rate and it was really built around a Litecoin. The simple description of Litecoin is basically the silver to Bitcoin's gold. It's always kind of functioned as Bitcoin's little brother, which was always spearheaded by Satoshi Light. If you're on Twitter and Satoshi Light, I'm sure will bring him up pretty quickly. That would be Ch Mr. Charlie Lee. And he's done some cool things and some controversial things, but either way, he's active in cryptocurrency. And Litecoin as a whole has been a great thing to the space because it's never aimed to replace Bitcoin. It's aimed to aid it, you know, be useful, be that silver to the gold. And that's cool. So let's do a quick recap before I go deep into the miner specifications. So this miner, again, is projected to break even in about a year, depending how you look at the calculations and what you do. Ideally, you know, it's really meant to decentralize hash rate. It's not something that's going to be deployed in mining farms, but it's a really cool tool for learning, experimenting. And like for me personally, if someone reached out like, hey, like I want to try mining, I want to try ASIC miner. And if they don't have a gaming PC or anything like that, then maybe a miner like this is actually the better route. Because you don't need to have a computer to, you know, use your gaming graphics card or whatever. You can buy this and use this and you can test out solo mining. You can test out pooled mining. You have to start using wallets. You'll, you know, get a real taste of what it's like to mine cryptocurrency. You can do it from the comfort of your own home without making it a nightmare. Because I'll never forget the day I got the Panda Miner, which was billed as an at-home GPU miner, right? So like at home, like I'm at home and I can put it in my home. That would be at home mining, which was how it was marketed. And I turned it on and it's, this is what it sounded like. 
Yeah. Not something your wife's going to be happy about, your girl's going to be happy about. That wife approval factor, that you know, girlfriend approval factor, and that's a big negative, which is going to be a big issue. Or maybe if you're single, you're always going to be single if you got a pantomime in your house because no chicks are coming over with that thing. They'll think, like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? This guy's weird. But with this minor, they'd be like, wow, this guy's a nerd, but he's like a cool nerd. And see, that's when they make the move on you. <laughs> oh god but seriously guys enough messing around let's jump back into it the minor so you can see we've got the hasher right here just like i showed you in the screenshots the same uh you know exact dashboard as before it's cool because you get readouts of your uptime and everything like that you can see the pool you're connected to the status of it and then how your shares are looking there if i come down here to the settings there's a lot of things you can change there's the very basic, you know, straightforward options of using the eco mode. So this is going to be a quieter, less uh, powerful mining mode. So if the balance mode is, for example, too loud for you, maybe in a real cramped uh, compartment or this thing ends up in your bedroom, eco mode is probably going to be the right decision for you. Balance mode is really going to be a good compromise of hash rate per power consumption and thus noise because the more power you consume, which is going to get you normally sort of that higher hash rate is going to produce more heat. That's the way science works. And with that, if you keep going up, you're going to keep producing more heat. You're going to have to run that fan faster. My miner is running great with a 25% fan speed, which is what I showed you with those audio clips in the beginning. And using that static speed and not allowing it to be automatic it gives you that white noise factor instead of it going up and down and up and you can see like even when i do that with my voice it's like boss stop that's annoying and i agree i am annoying not just because of my voice or fluctuations in it but enough of that there i go off topic again there is the wi-fi functionality which is really cool so you can see i can go ahead and scan for a network i can click on my home network i can enter my password and click enter and then it's going to load and then I will be connected to the Wi-Fi and not have to use an Ethernet connection. So you are, to my knowledge, going to need an Ethernet connection to get set up with this device. But once you once you get set up, then you can use it on Wi-Fi. You can move it around. You can put it wherever. So honestly, that again, that's really cool. This is a lot of just utility in a small mining device that I can put on my Wi-Fi and put it wherever. Now you can really put it in some crevice corner of your house where it's not, you know, close to some kind of like your router, for example. So let's see if this works. I'll come over here and you can put a password in. Um, it comes with none by default and asks you to set up one. I just made an admin uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. And uh, once I do that, um, you know, I'm right back in here in the miner. As you can see, I'm now on Wi-Fi connected into the device. Really cool really simple beautiful basic simple functional dashboard it's like everything you ever wanted we can uh, adjust the layout a little bit which you know customization is always a cool feature to have i can also add additional pools in addition to you know the first one so i can have failover pools say this pool goes down well i'm not going to lose uptime because it'll automatically fail over or go to the next mining pool and you know i can put whatever pool i want to there in addition to that it's really easy to change your pools because if I just take this stuff to get another one, I can go like this up down. I mean, it won't change on the visually because it's exactly the same, but I can go ahead and add additional pools and I can swap it on mining. Say you want to change coins or whatever, real easy. You can just click up or down and that's going to become your primary unless the main coin that your miner runs. I also tested this to see you know, if it was true and accurate. This is really cool that this device gives you the option to donate. By default, it's on 1%, which I think is very, very, very fair. But you are you can donate your hash rate over here however much you want or not at all. And giving people the option, which, I mean, I feel bad for this guy because I'm worried a lot of people are going to turn off the donation when I think you know it's fair to donate a little bit back but then you can make the argument well he sold this miner for money and made the profit whatever so I get it guys I get it you know just relax relax I'm looking at the full picture but anyway I think it's really cool that he has that built in and it's optional so good for him I think that's the best way to go about it other than that in the dashboard we got start stop restart and I can also reboot and shut down the machine right here from the dashboard which is Really cool. The only other information you'll get in this dash, which I mean, as if you didn't already get everything pretty much, was you'll get a readout of the critical info right there at the top, which would be your hash rate and temperature. And you come over here, you can see uh, 
what OS you're running on, your Wi-Fi, what minor version, network information, and the system utilization of this device. So all in all guys, I think this is really cool. And if you can't just take a step back and appreciate this device for what it is, I think you're looking either too much at just profits and not how a device like this can benefit the space, decentralize the hash rate, and be an awesome entryway tool to new cryptocurrency users and miners. And also a teaching device. Imagine a device like this in college classrooms and high, really, I hope, hopefully, high school classrooms across the all the countries, really. And just imagine a device like that in there and the wonders it could do to these, like just the youth of just getting into this technology, learning about cryptocurrency, or really just technology in general, and having this device right here that runs a network that functions as a storage device, that decentralizes hash rate, and you can do it anywhere. It can be ran off Wi-Fi. It has a nice, pretty dashboard. That is something their last USB miner did not have. And you always have to take you know, your hat off and you know, pay respects when a company like this furthers their development and each time they come out with a new product, it's nicer. This one has a nicer case. It has a nicer dashboard. It's a better product. They're improving, they're evolving, and this came out in a bear market. And it's easy to get down in a bear market. I've had some frustrating times, like everyone else. I've lost a lot of money, like everyone else. The one thing I can't lose, or I have to make sure I don't, is just the vision and the hope and cryptocurrency. And just, you know, really getting back to the roots of why I got into this. Because it's interesting. It's fun. It's mesmerizing. It's the future. It's beneficial. It has so many just benefits to cryptocurrency and all this associated tech and it's the hardware that really drew me in and that's also what's making me stay i love the hardware i hope you guys love this review because that's it this is my full review on the future bit apollo script asic miner that is really one of the first miners that would be good for your house whereas most of them are not so make sure to hit that thumbs up on the video, share the video with your friends. Maybe you can get them into crypto mining with a device like this. I'm actually talking to one of my buddies right now and I just really explained to him what I explained to you guys here on this video that this is a cool device and if you want to mess around with crypto and especially crypto mining, get something like this. Have some fun with it. Do some pooled mine. Do some solo mining. Try a couple of different coins. Get on a couple of exchanges. Try those wallets. Download a wallet to your personal phone or computer. Try it there. It's a just it's the it'll be the gateway drug to cryptocurrency. Maybe that's what this will end up being. I don't know. But again, I do know that you all are awesome. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks you. Thank you. I was gonna say thanks you. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanna be with you. Yeah, I just wanna be